What's up guys? Zyber and I back and uh, we just got a, a new gameplay video dropped for about seven minutes from IGN for Power Rangers Battle for the Grid and this is my third video today so uh, yeah this is a, a busy day for news on this game. We got some gameplay it looks like uh, for Magnet Defender that's not just uh, a couple of scenes and then also more gameplay for the Mastodon Sentry and for Cat Manx and then MMPR Red, Jason, uh, Lord Draken, and Tommy. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. And also Gia. And don't forget to vote, guys, on uh, the Facebook for Battle for the Grid for the Morph Madness characters of the uh, semifinals. Trying to get Ranger Slayer and Gia Morin as your finals. And have Ranger Slayer win overall. But yeah, guys, let's go ahead and get to it. And, uh... Hype. That's all I can really say. Three, two, one, fight. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, we're back, and uh, I'm setting it at half speed so you guys can see the animations and the character movement and stuff. Actually, we'll put it at quarter speed because you guys enjoyed it a lot more at quarter speed before. There we go. So, let's go ahead and get some discussion in. Also, there was Goldar gameplay as well that we had never seen before. We got to see Goldar Super. It was a, uh, a diving attack. So, that was kind of cool. And on top of that, we also got to see the implementation of the... Uh, whenever Mastodon Sentry did his um, Super the life bar flashed on the other team as well. So that was kind of interesting that the assist life bar would flash whenever a counter attack was, or a counter super was being activated. So that was interesting. Um, this looks like this is a little bit older build than what they played tonight on the stream from Mways, um, you know, the Morph Madness uh, round one poll results stream where we got to see Mastodon, Sentry, and Cat Manx gameplay. But um, the main reason I say that is because, for one, this is definitely still in alpha form because I don't see any markers for victories at all underneath the life bars for the characters, player one and player two. So... That's something that would definitely be there in a beta form, and it's not in this. The uh, the lighting is there on the character models, and the shaders are implemented, but I don't see all of the textures and the mesh textures still yet. And then the backgrounds are still kind of neutral lighting or neutered lighting, so to speak. So, it's still missing post-processing, uh, mesh, and probably screen space, ambient occlusion as well, as far as uh, advanced processing and things like that. The one thing I don't know what this API is going to be on PC for Steam, if it's going to be DX11, DX12, or Vulkan. I'm hoping it's Vulkan or DX12, that way on the Xbox it'll have a little bit more advantages with the ability to run things more smoothly and I'll be able to offload more of it to the RAM for running a more um, stable network connection for the online performance. We got to see Goldar has a special attacks. He has a dash rush. He has a uh, air throw, which I think he's so far the only character I've seen that has an air throw. And like I said before, guys, this is from IGN, and I'll post the original link for their video in my description of my video, because I always uh, reference all source material where it, it's belonged to. And um, we got to see Magna Defender's attacks as well, and it seems that he has an up attack is basically like Zika's revenge. And um, his Magna Blaster seems to be the back special. And his forward special seems to be not very easily visible in this video. So we're supposed to, I'm guessing the next weeks on the 18th, we'll get gameplay for Goldar. And for Magna Defender next. Even though Magna Defender was the last character unveiled on the character listing. I still think that's what they're going to do. Where they've still not shown anything but just assist only for Ranger Slayer. And they may, with Ranger Slayer, also, also show at the same time the premium MMPR pink skin to see how that'll be implemented, or they may not show any of the premium skins until they have the work done, because my hope, my own personal hope, 
is that the premium skins will involve enough that it changes the appearance of the character as well as a, a, a modified loadout of moves for the character. So their weapon could change, their move sets could be a little modified or completely different, similar to how Mortal Kombat and Injustice 2 have for gear and for the uh, parts of the outfit changing in MK11 where the, it changes the move sets or loadouts of moves that your character has to perform based on specials and skills and things like that. So Goldar seems to be a very... I don't want to say a Potemkin-type character, like a throw character base, but more like a bruiser where that he has powerful attacks, he has fast attacks, and he can push his weight around literally on the screen toward the other uh, player. So we'll have to just wait and see until we see a descriptive gameplay video from Clockwork or Shady K during the next Mway stream to be able to understand what move patterns and things that he has as well as it looks like he has uh, three different um, combo starters for air launchers, which is interesting. Magna Defender has a uh, setup where that the way it appeared, he can use a round kick to launch or he can use the sword to launch in the air with an EX attack, similar to how the other characters, MMPR Red, Jason, and Tommy Oliver, MMPR Green, have both their sword or dagger dash and rush upper. So I'm really intrigued by the EX attacks because there are three different voices that I hear whenever on the super for Mastodon Sentry gets called out. And also whenever the assist gets used only, it's a different voice as well for the Mastodon Sentry. So that makes me think that like in the headphones or in the headset that he's wearing, he's talking to the other one and they're calling it in or something, which is interesting. But yeah, guys, I, I like how this set up a, a lot more usage that it gave us confirmation in an actual match. You have until your meter runs down on your Mega Ultra. Or your Mega's form Ultra, be it Goldar, the Megazord, or the Dragonzord currently. So you activate it and you can use it through the time when it says Megazord ready. Or Megazord activated and goes across the screen with the tag. At that point, your timer starts clocking down. And you have through all of that time until it reaches back around to refresh that you can use it. And they showed off they did three moves in the time it took it to completely count and down and around. So, I like where this is headed. I like that gives you a good amount of ability that you can use for combo potential off of that. I do still wish that there were more Marvel implements like the DHCs and the THCs because I think having a uh, one super after another after another would be nice if you had all three characters that you could do it Instead of a super costing two bars, you could do a super, a super, and a super, or super EX to a super, or an EX super, to where it just does, like, amplify damage similar to how Mortal Kombat 11 is. There's a lot of implementation that they can still do. There's a lot of things that can change on this. And people were asking me earlier tonight that... Uh, you know, they were reading in the description of the original character, new characters video this morning that was posted that these are the seven 
or the nine starting lineup of launch characters. But I don't think that Enway is just going to give us nine characters and then do another nine for season pass content. I still think that it's of what they showed on the website originally, which was 15 character slots. And then they had three characters that were listed for the season pass. But if they do give us fewer characters and split things up a little bit, but give us a premium skins in with things that do change and modify move sets and stuff, that's going to be like an expanded roster right there. So if we have every single character has a premium skin that gives them a modified move set, you know, if we have a total of 18 characters, that'll give us 36, which is a good roster amount for a versus game. Especially for a team versus game. But it doesn't make sense that they would only have nine characters to start with at launch. I mean, the game you could technically say is in launch mode right now, but you could also say right now this is a release window. So there's different things that could be implemented as far as that stuff goes. We'll just have to see. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll put this back to half speed. There we go. Sorry, guys. It takes a bit just to get it set in. But uh, I'm impressed. And yeah, I just turned on background music. Sorry about that. I'm just at this point, I'm going to take them for what they originally said because it wasn't until I made my video for how to pre order and the info on the website to fill in for people that they removed that grid of all the character slots and then they put up the nine that showed after the stream that night that added Magna Defender on there. And that's what they've had on the website ever since. So if you go back and watch my video, you'll see how it used to look on the pre-ordering for the character slots available on the page. And then they changed that to where it was just nine characters is what they showed. I really don't think that Enway would want to do that because they're just now getting notoriety and a lot more people in media talking about this game and realizing that, you know, what they are and the type of platform they can they can actually build off of this game as well as being able to establish themselves in the fighting game community as a uh, referenced household name of you know combo based team fighting and maybe this will help them be able to catapult into a publishing deal that they could be able to get a, a physical release come out on the switch for a deluxe version package or something like post dlc release because until that happens i'm not going to buy it on switch for the reasons i've already mentioned and um i'll stick with the xbox one and pc because the xbox one gets all the extra bonuses that are free you know the extra key for the game as well as the uh collector's art book digital copy information stuff and the season pass itself so uh guys thanks for watching keep looking forward to more information on this game you have any questions leave a comment down below please like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me and hope you guys have a good night good day we'll see you later zyber signing off take care